Consensus is an AI-powered search engine for academic research. It has so many crazy features that it makes it so useful for people in academia, people doing a PhD, and anyone that just really wants to do a little bit of research around a question that pops into their head. Let's check it out. So, Consensus, the landing page is just this one. It's a very simple layout, which I love. And down here, you've got Ask a Research Question. If you click in there, you've got all of these options, but quite often you'll go there with your own research question in your mind and you can type it in. So let's have a look at this one. What causes spine shrinkage? All you have to do is click there and then you get given all of the powerful information at your fingertips. Let's check it out step by step. Stay with me because there are so many features that aren't anywhere else. So the first thing you get is this summary. A summary up here where you get all of the papers analyzed and you can say that this is kind of the take home message from the papers that it's analyzed. Then underneath you've got Copilot, which is a brand new feature that essentially puts ChatGPT smack bang in the middle of the research that is relevant for you. So this one you can see it's got an answer to that question and it's got all of these references here and uh, all you have to do is click on these and it will take you to the references which are down below. So let's carry on sort of scrolling and this is where the real power of consensus comes to light because you get the paper title, and then an AI generated answer to that question that you search for for each individual paper, which is just so useful. If they can't find a useful AI generated answer, it will just be like a summary from that paper. But in my experience, it has worked so incredibly well. You get each of these cards, and on these cards, it's just sort of like packed full with the sorts of questions you should be sort of like having about the research that you're reading. So, what type of study is it? You know, whether or not it's highly cited, whether or not this is influential research or not, because that will help you determine whether or not it's useful for you. And then we've got highly cited. We've also got, you know, non-random controlled trials. So here is really useful to know. These badges really make it an easy to understand what is relevant research right away. And stay tuned because we're going to filter these with AI filters that don't exist on any other app. So carry on going down. You can see we get all of these. And this is what I really love about it is you've got the option to turn off synthesize up here and turn off Copilot if you want, but they are very useful. I would recommend keeping them on. And this consensus meter is very, very powerful. If you ask a yes, no question, it will give you a consensus of the research that it has sort of like found. So for example, here are artificial sweeteners healthier than sugar and the consensus Census meter here. It's got seven papers and I think it can analyze up to 20. It says yes, 71%, possibly 14%, no, 14%. So here you can see what the research field is saying at the moment given this search. A really great way to find those conflicts for finding research gaps. So on this question, on are artificial sweeteners healthier than sugar, the co-pilot has come up with this kind of little summary of the research. And if I click on these, it'll scroll down to where it gets that information from. Now, here's the thing, is this co-pilot doesn't just do the summary. You can also ask it to do stuff which to me is just crazy. It brings all of the power of ChatGPT into this app. So for example, I asked it to write a literature review on the progress of transparent electrodes. That was my research field for my postdocs and it automatically turned off synthesize. It was like, we don't need to synthesize stuff. We're creating a literature review and this is what it came up with, a really in-depth, really sort of long literature review. Now it has its typical AI tells, like all of this in conclusion, finally. And, uh, it is a little bit clunky, but that is a perfect start for your literature review because you know exactly where it's got the information from and it's doing the citation for you as it goes. This is so, so crazy useful that uh, everyone should do this, I think, at the beginning of a research project. So you can also just ask it to do stuff for you like you would ChatGPT and the co-pilot takes over and says, no worries, mate. 
I got this. Filtering is such an important part of the literature because as you're reading it, you should be asking yourself questions like, is this a random controlled trial? Is this a human study? Is it an animal study? What is the population size of this study? All of that stuff should be going through your mind, but now consensus gives you the ability to do that so, so easily. Check this out. This is AI filtering like I've never seen before. So you get all of the normal sort of like filters. And I've asked this question, does fish oil in improve mood and you got 50% yes, possibly a no. So you can see it's quite mixed out there at the moment, but that's actually filter for the useful studies. So down here we can say, okay, yes, I want all years. Um, you can have open access, you can have citations, you've got methods. So I wanna click down here and you can see that you've got all of these sort of like different methods. These are the study types that you can choose from. So if you're starting early on, you can say, I only want the literature review, I only want the animal trials, but here we go. This is what is super powerful. This is the consensus at the moment based on the question you have asked, but let's filter it to get even more rigorous with our research question. So I want controlled studies, I want human studies, and I want at least 50 per study as a sample size, and I'm gonna push apply. And you can see it goes from that really sort of like uncertain consensus to a consensus, 100% no. That is the power of consensus, giving you the ability to filter on the fly so you can find the real answer, not just that kind of like muddled gray area that can sometimes happen in academia when there's just so much information, you can't see the forest for the trees. So there we are. Also, don't take fish oil to improve your mood. Free information, bonus. Now let's dig a little deeper. So. On all of these samples, I'm gonna turn off synthesizer, I'm gonna turn off Copilot. This is just the information I want to know. It's the papers in the list that are useful for this question. So you get this and you get these study snapshots. You can click down here and you get the population, the sample size, the methods, the outcomes and everything. If you click on here, you'll get the information specific to that paper that it found. And so you have got a study snapshot. Oh, why can't I say that? Study snapshot. And you can see you've got all of the badges. This is a random controlled trial. This is a highly cited thing. It also gives you access to the full text, Semantic Scholar. And with the plugin, you can even use this with something like Zotero to take this into your reference manager for referencing later on in Word or Doc or whatever you use to write. But this is just so powerful. Um, I can go back and you can also save stuff. You can save your search. So you can save it to a list if you're doing a particular study or you need references for a particular paper. You can save it to a list, which is fantastic. You can also um, export. You can cite in all of the ways that you need to cite it. So it has all of the actual functionality that science scientists and researchers need on a daily basis already completely plugged in. Um, and then down here you get related searches for every single thing that you search. So this is a great way of going deeper into the research and it's just so crazy. Another thing that I love down here, by the way, is SciScore. So it's powered by this company, which not only tells you, you know, like the H index or the impact factor of a particular journal, but it also gives you the ability to see if the journal has rigorous submission requirements, which means that you can trust that research a little bit more. It's not a predatory journal. So the integrations here are just so great. It's all of the information at your fingertips. Love it. If that wasn't good enough for you, Consensus is actually available to be accessed on the GPT store right now. And apparently it's the number one most used GPT on the store at the moment, which is just a testament to how great this tool is, I think. So here we go. You've got your research assistant, all here, and this is putting consensus in chat GPT, which I've talked about before. Go check out this video where I've talked about using GPTs um, for research, but um, you've got the power of both if you're a sort of uh, using and want to use consensus. You can use it in chat GPT, you can use chat GPT in consensus with the co-pilot, which is just here. So uh, yeah, just a really 
powerful set of tools that everyone in research and academia should know about and consider using because I think you'll be using this on a daily basis. If you like this video, go check out this one where I talk about the new way to use Google Scholar combined with ChatGPT for researchers. Super powerful. Go check it out.